Hey folks, Guns, Gear, and On-Target Training out here in Oregon. Over the past couple of months, I've had several people ask me about training and different styles of training. One of the things that I think is often overlooked when training on the range or going to classes is actually how you then stress test yourself and how do you evaluate that you have the skills in an armed encounter to determine that you actually know how to run the gun. You have a high level of proficiency with whatever firearm you've chosen, and they can still apply the most important safety mechanism, which is your brain, in using verbal communication, in movement, other aspects, rather than just shooting the firearm. The best way to train that ultimately is in some sort of simunition force on force. And obviously that can be done, but it's very expensive to do. And you often have to go to a very specific type of school or training environment where they have the equipment, so it's safe to shoot simunitions and be shot by them. And they have the training and expertise to instruct how that's done. Another way to achieve that is with airsoft. Yes, airsoft. So you're shooting some projectile at someone else. And then all the things that you don't get typically on a flat range, especially shooting, moving, verbal communication, de-escalization techniques, things that in the real world add significant value because the perfect scenario of a gunfight is never to get in one to begin with. However, if you are then in that gunfight, what do you do? How do you communicate? How do you effectively stop the threat? And then after the encounter, what do you say or don't say to law enforcement so you minimize the amount of liability that you had, even if justified? One of the things I've done a few times now, and I did about two months ago, was I went to a firearm simulator. And this is a company located here in Oregon, not too far away from where I live. And what they allow you to do is they put you in various scenarios where you must make an informed decision. <clears throat> you have to move, you have to communicate, you have to do all those other things that typically you don't get when standing on a flat range shooting at paper or steel targets. So I scheduled an hour. I worked with a former law enforcement uh, trainer who is now doing this. And I also asked him specifically to stress test what I said. He played a role sometimes. He didn't necessarily always define when he was going to do it, but he played a specific role as the police officer arriving on scene immediately following the event. And one of those was bad guy came in, shot someone, pointed the gun at me. I immediately presented my weapon, fired back. And with the simulator, you're using a gun that operates pneumatically. So there is a, a CO2 cartridge within that cycles the slide itself. So it feels a little bit in terms of its movement like a typical semi-automatic. Obviously, it's not emitting an actual projectile. It's only emitting a laser to allow the analysis of where you're making the hits. So bad guy comes in robbery attempt, he decides, you know, bad guy shoots one of the um, people working behind the counter. There's no way for me to escape. There's no aggress option. I cannot get away. So immediately I gave him verbal commands to stop, put down the gun. He swung the gun toward me, fired, you know, a couple, three hits, good center mass, upper chest, he goes down. And immediately in my ear is the trainer saying, police! <laughs> I won't say what else they said, but it was some expletives. And uh, immediately, you know, what do I have to do? So I say, I am the victim. I shout back at him. I do not turn. I do not move the muzzle of the gun. And he's put the effing gun down. So without looking at him, you know, I continued to communicate. I said, I will comply. And he's like, shut the F up. Put the firearm down on the ground in the simulator. This is a 340 degree simulator. So you've got this essential video room that feels very realistic. And, uh, you know, immediately, you know, cuffs me. It's like, what happened here? I said, it was in fear for my life. 
He said, well, tell me what happened. I said, I'm happy to cooperate with you, but not until my attorney is present. That was it. He kept trying, 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 trying to get me to say something. And I said nothing. Now, here's a law enforcement officer with experience. And he said, you know, most people don't do that. First thing they do when the police show up on the scene and they've got a gun in the hand is they turn toward the police, which you don't want to do. The second is they don't communicate, but they start yelling some gibberish, short, clear, definitive, declarative sentences. I am the victim. I was in fear for my life. I will cooperate with my attorney present. That's it. That's the narrative. Set up another scenario where <laughs> out of multiple doors, so you're standing in the middle of this thing, and obviously it's just designed to really amp up your level of stress, to really stress test you. You don't, you're hearing all kinds of noises. Some, some of it's mechanical noises, some of it's sirens, it's just constant information overload. And then people are coming through various doors, many of whom aren't, aren't armed, many of who them are armed. And so, you know, you're making this split second decision of shoot, don't shoot. What do you do when you do shoot? And then, you know, one of the simple things that I, you know, I was really struggling with is how do you stay, you know, aware of everything that's going about you when there are multiple avenues of, you know, potential threats coming your way. And so, you know, he gave me a really simple thing. I know this, I've been trained on it, but it didn't click in this thing. And that is, I simply step one foot across the other, rotate my entire body with my muzzle pointed in a sewer position down south, right? So I just rotate simply by stepping across and then to reverse that to the other side. And how much more effective that was than what I was trying to do is sort of circle this area. Big learning, right? And there were other scenarios that he did um, including, you know, setting up and said, okay, here's the scenario. You arrive at the doctor's office and there's a shooting going, you know, you hear, no one's there. You hear shots. What do you do? I said, I'm not going in. I dial 911 and get out of there. And he's like, exactly. That's exactly what the armed civilian should do. Then he gave me the scenario, same place. Okay. Your daughter's in there. You know, you're supposed to meet her at a time. So she's, she's, you know, late. You go to the office, you walk in the door, and no one's there. No one's there whatsoever. <clears throat> you know, what happens? Well, at this point, I haven't seen a threat. I haven't identified a threat, so I'm not drawing my gun. So I'm, I'm walking. I'm walking slowly and deliberately simulated down this hall. And then there's somebody underneath the table saying, there's a gun, guy with a gun in here. There's an active shooter. I'm like, call the police. Call the police. 911. Tell them I am someone here. And... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not the bad guy because the scenario again is that I'm trying to find my daughter. Otherwise I wouldn't be in there. So continue down through the course. All of a sudden I see someone shot immediately. Now I pull my gun because I believe uh, there's a potential threat to me or to someone else. Right. So I am justifying in that action of, of bringing my gun up. And again, I'm at about a 45 degree com sort of compressed ready here and I'm seeing where the sound is coming from. I see someone get shot, fall down. Guy comes around the corner, gun up, you know, boom, 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 boom. Take that threat down. Um, so these kinds of scenarios are really, really important to train with. It cost me $150. Best $150 I have spent in a long time on training. Didn't cost me any ammunition gave me the opportunity to test things beyond my weapons manipulation skills and my marksmanship, right? Which were fine. I mean, he said to me, you know, you obviously know what you're doing. You know how to run the gun. You're safe with a gun. Um, but it allowed me to test the nuance of communicating, shooting and moving, and as importantly, what to do after the threat presented itself. And I had to use lethal force. So many people get into worse trouble, even when justified in a shooting, by wanting to, to spill their guts. I would note that's not a good thing to do. Realize that you are so stressed out and your, your memory recall and some of those things are very, very, very uh, much in flux and you're highly you're, you're traumatized to some degree, right? You've just been involved in a situation where you had to save your life by potentially taking someone's, someone else's. 
That's an incredibly heavy thing. So don't speak, ask for an attorney, and then keep your mouth shut. The last thing uh, scenario, which was really helpful, is I was walking down the street in this scenario. There's a woman who comes out of the house screaming, hey, he's next door, he's trying to kill me, he's insane. I, I, I'm walking down the street like, what? Turn to the other side, the street side, and there's this guy. He's, he's really aggressive, and I'm just using verbal commands, trying to communicate, hey, dude, like, slow down, let's work it out. Like, hey, calm down, calm down, calm down. He goes up, runs across, grabs the woman, pulls out a screwdriver. And at this point now, he is a lethal threat to me. He's a lethal threat to someone else. I mean, really, it's to her. But if he gets up and charges at me, so I've got my gun out, I've got it on him, and I'm giving him verbal commands, drop the weapon, drop the weapon, stop. And finally, he looks he looks like he's about ready to lunge into the side of her neck, so I shoot him. I right, good, nice. But I wanted good ocular cranial shot, two shots right here, goes down. And then the scenario again at the police. And he stayed, uh, the scenario after it ended, Colin, who was the trainer, <laughs> acting as police officer, just kept asking. And he, and he changed his tack. First, it was very aggressive. And I kept saying, I, I will not speak to my attorneys there. I won't speak to my attorneys present. I wish to invoke my Fifth Amendment rights, whatever. And he kept after it. And, and then he changed his tactic. He got really nice. He's like, look, man, I get it. Like, you you probably did the right thing here. But, geez, you know, just just tell me what happened. And I said, I thought he was going to kill that woman. And he stopped right there and he said, you just lost your Fifth Amendment right. Because after invoking it, you spoke and you answered a question. If you do that, and it was a real scenario, everything you, you have no right to invoke that privilege that right of the constitutional right of fifth amendment against self-incrimination because you already answered a question i'm not an attorney i don't know but i sure would not want to test that in court so again guys here's what i want you to think about if you have a firearm or some other deadly weapon that you might use to protect yourself or your family. I'm not talking about property. Frankly, I don't think that justifies using deadly force, but that's my opinion. <clears throat> if you are planning to use a tool to protect yourself, your family, your loved ones, you must, must get training. You need to practice. You need to work in a situation of stress testing, whether that's a shot timer in competition or ideally some force on force applications where it all changes when it's three dimensional and people are shooting back at you. I've done simunitions a couple of times, done a lot of airsoft and I'm telling you, it completely changes. And all the things that you might thought you were really great at, you'll find maybe you're not so great at those things, whether it's a stoppage malfunction clearance whether it's seeing the front sight or seeing whatever you're using as an aiming device or whether you're just sort of throwing rounds downrange, all of that shows up with the right kind of training. And finally, if you have a chance to go to a simulator, especially one that gives you 340 degrees, do it. Best money you'll spend. And you're gonna learn where the wheels of your training fall off. And you're gonna be able to make changes. And some of those changes are very, very critical, such as what you say, when you say it, and how you say it. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this topic. If you did, smash that like button, subscribe, share the video with your friends and family. Finally, as always, stay safe.